Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, which is the fourth edition of our monthly webinars we are holding this year. Logs.io's customer success team is always at your service, and we would like to make sure all of you receive the proper training and support you need to utilize Logs.io's platform to the fullest extent. My name is Boaz Abel, Head of Customer Success at Logs.io, and with me today are two of my colleagues, Eli Matthews, Solution Architect and Sales Engineer, and Noni Perry, Operations Engineer. We also have a special guest, FX Boulet, a Software Engineer at Rubrik. Thank you for joining. Throughout the webinar, we are going to conduct four polls. Please vote and let us know what you think. Also on the line with us is Eric Alfano, Customer Care Engineer at Logs.io, who is waiting for any questions you may have. So please go ahead and send your questions to us as they come. Before we kick off the webinar, we are proud to share with you that Logs.io was recently selected by Gartner as Cool Vendors in Performance Analysis, AI Ops Focus. Thank you, and please enjoy the webinar. Eli, please take it away from, from here. Good luck. Thank you, Boaz, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Eli Matthews, and I'm just going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, starting the presentation with a few images that you may or may not be familiar with. Just to kind of get us started here, uh, today we'll be talking about shipping container logs to Logs.io. Uh, this will also cover shipping them to the ELK stack, so we'll talk in detail about both of those. Uh, just a little picture so you can get to know me a little bit better. That's me, the, the bald guy throwing the kid in the air. That's my son. Uh, so who survived that just fine, but uh, uh, suffered a, a broken leg recently with, with another incident, but he's doing well. Uh, so this logo here down in the uh, bottom left here is actually Kubernetes. Um, and this presentation is going to assume a base working knowledge with both uh, Docker, which you see down in the middle here, and Kubernetes and other orchestration tools. But the scope of this presentation is going to cover Docker, Kubernetes, logging, logs.io, ELK, et cetera. And then the final logo uh, may not recognize it much, but it's actually the Elastic Container Service from Amazon. So we'll talk about container logging in a little bit of depth there as well. So let's go ahead and, and dive into uh, you know, a particular situation where we're trying to resolve a problem. You know, what are we typically looking for in the logs? You know, that's me with the, the puzzled face up there. An incident has happened at perhaps a particular time. And the things that I would like to understand from the logs are a little bit of context around that. So what environment am I looking for? Test, dev, QA, pre-prod, one of these environments. And then what app or service am I actually after? Um, so maybe a you know, ton of different services that we're running, and I actually want to drill in on context for those two particular things. Now, there may be other contexts too. Uh, those are just a couple of quick examples. Um, but those are the things that we're going to keep in mind that we're actually going to try to resolve uh, when we log this information. We want to make sure that it has the proper context so that we can go ahead and dive in and troubleshoot an issue. Uh, now, in the next slide, I'm going to talk about some of our higher level solutions uh, for actually doing container logging. And then everyone's presentation is going to dive into the subsequent details. Um, but I want to make sure that everybody's kind of engaged here. Uh, so just asking a, a quick poll here, and I'm just going to pause for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. So go ahead and just see if you can answer the question for for the poll. Um, we'll go ahead and, and uh, get a few responses here, and then perhaps we'll be able to share some of those. Just want to understand where everybody's at, uh, you know, with containers and container orchestration, if they're actually beginning to, you know, run some of that in production, or they have it more in development environment. <clears throat> so I'll go ahead and, and wait just a, a few more seconds to capture a, a couple of, of more votes there. And then we'll be able to actually close the poll and share the results kind of in real time. All right. 
So looks like we've got about 80% of the votes, capturing one or two more there. And I'll go ahead and close the poll up. All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and share the results quickly. Um, not sure if everybody can see them, but it looks like 86% of the people are actually using containers now in production or development. So excellent. All right, thank you everybody. And let's kind of get going. Um, you know, what do we want at the end of the day? We want a record uh, that has something that happened and has some good context. In this situation, we know it's coming from the production environment, and we know that we're utilizing our console server uh, application or service. We've got some of our log level things and an image and some other useful information that's part of that context, but we have those key things that we're looking for there. Now, the solutions that we are going to cover in the presentation today uh, are Fluent Bit, uh, part of the Fluent D family. Uh, so FX from Rubrik, who's presenting with us, will actually be able to talk through Fluent Bit and how they use it in much more depth. And then we're going to cover the logging library by Logs.io, uh, also some other logging frameworks, and Nani is going to cover this in further depth and how that's utilized at Logs.io. And then I'll do a quick piece on Fluent D and how we worked with a key customer to actually implement Fluent D for their needs. And then I'll finally very briefly cover the beat solutions around kind of Docker and Kubernetes as well. So let me move on here. All right, so we're actually on to FX's presentation. So I'm going to pause here for a moment and I'm gonna go ahead and unmute uh, FX so he can take over with the presentation. FX, I've unmuted you. So if you wanna go ahead and talk and see if we can hear you. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me fine? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Okay, if you uh, can stop with my first slide, please. Uh, thank you. Okay, so I'll talk about how to collect uh, container logs uh, from Kubernetes using Fluent Beat and Fluent D. Then, why did we choose uh, Logs EIO? And finally, how do we uh, handle sorting logs at the source? Uh, why and how we do that? Uh, but before starting, I'll give us some uh, context about the Polaris project and Rubrik in general. Rubrik sells uh, backup appliances, um, not only physical appliances, but also cloud uh, version of it. And most of our customers buy uh, multiple of them. And the uh, Polaris effort is to allow customers to have a central view and central control of all their backup appliances in one place, uh, no matter if they're on different sites. And the goal of this project is to um, not only uh, give you a central monitoring, uh, but also allow you to run distributed tasks. Uh, think about map reduce that job to do data analytics on top of your backup data. So we expect to have a lot of logs, uh, you know, across a broad range of uh, of uh, application on there. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's it for the context. We can uh, go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, okay, so first step out of seven, uh, what, what is our cu uh, current setup? Uh, we use a pod uh, with Fluent Beat and Fluent D, two different processes, uh, sending the logs to Logs.io. And to run this pod on Kubernetes, we use a daemon set with a role account. And so what is a daemon set? It runs uh, one instance of all processes per uh, node, so per physical machine, in our case, because we're running on GCP, it will be per uh, virtual machine on GCP. Uh, and why do we use Fluent B and Fluent D? There's a really two reasons. Uh, one is Fluent B uh, for speed, and we initially wanted to use Fluent B only. Uh, but then when we switched to Logs.io, uh, Logs.io uh, plugin is for Fluent D, so we decided to do a forwarding from Fluent B for, to Fluent D to have the parsing done by Fluent B. And it turns out that Fluentd is a little bit more flexible. It's easier to implement plugins and try things around. Uh, so it, it's uh, it's also quite useful to to combine the the two, basically the best of uh, both worlds. Uh, we can switch to the next slide, please. So the first step is to collect the logs uh, from the uh, container logs uh, available on the machine. For that, we use the tail plugin with the Docker parser on uh, Fluentd. And uh, you really simply have to collect the logs from var log containers and then any file.log. 
Uh, and that's enough to collect all the container logs on the machine. Uh, that only works if you have granted uh, the permission to your container. And again, it has to be a daemon set and it has to have a role account. You can find all the details on the official Kubernetes documentation online. We can thank you. Then we have a filter uh, to uh, add metadata, Kubernetes metadata to our logs. So there's this interesting filter plugin. It can talk to Kubernetes. You can see the kubeurl address and it's able to uh, extract metadata and inject them to into the logs. Uh, so you get the full details of the pod is coming on, et cetera. It's fully augmented. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Then we forward uh, to the uh, Fluent D running uh, in the same pods on the same machine. Really straightforward, use the forward plugin, one port. And then if we go to the next slide, we'll see that we do uh, the opposite on the other side. Fluent D uh, uses the forward plugin as an input. The same port receives the log from Fluent Bit. And then uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and then we have finally the uh, Logs.io uh, buffer uh, plugin, which sends all the logs to Logs.io. Very simple configuration. Just put your token there, and it will send everything to Logs.io. Uh, really nothing to do uh, besides basic you know, memory limits. Uh, we can switch to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, here's a really, really big picture overview of the Kubernetes demon set. Um, the daemon set has a template of uh, two containers, one for Fluent D uh, for water and one for Fluent Bit. Uh, that's all you really require to run this on the Kubernetes cluster. So it's a really, really easy setup. Okay, so let's talk now about uh, why uh, Logs.io on the next slide, please. Thank you. So initially we tried using Elasticsearch. Uh, we tried using other uh, managed services. Uh, it did not work well. Uh, we didn't have time to manage on self a service, uh, analyze uh, the resources and all of that. So we really uh, like Logs.io because it re generally just works. Uh, you know, you pay for ingestion per day plus retention. That works really well with us. It's fully managed, configure logger, done. Don't have anything to do. The support was uh, always reactive. Is you, know, uh, you know, nothing, nothing to worry about. Always somebody to to have your back. And then it just works really fast. Uh, compared to all the other solutions we had, it just uh, never slows down, which is really convenient when you have a problem and you have to look at it. Uh, that's really good. Uh, and finally, there's a bunch of features in progress, like Insight and stuff that are getting better and that, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to the future there. Uh, let's go to the next slide and talk a little bit about throttling. So uh, the, the, the question why, um, so now that we have all the logs going to Logs.io, uh, sending everything from, for, from our Kubernetes uh, clusters, uh, we started encountering some problems, uh, burning through our Logs.io quota really quickly in a few hours uh, in case of software bugs, DevOps mistakes. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's enough to have a simple while loop that goes crazy and keep logging the same error message over and over, and, uh, and it will just burn through your quota really quickly, and that's not useful. You don't really want to keep those logs. So, this is why our throttling comes in. We can go to the next slide, please. So we decided to write a throttle plugin for Fluent D, and this plugin is open source. You'll get the link at the end. Uh, the idea was to throttle at the source uh, because, after all, um, uh, even though Logs.io is really generous and they let us go over Okada many, many times. Uh, and they try to work with us um, to, to solve the problem, uh, at some point you have to simply stop sending logs in the first place. So we decided to throw the letter source and the and uh, have a leaky bucket implementation. Um, and it's, it's configurable, but in our case, we filter per uh, Kubernetes pod instance. So every single pod containing you know, one or n container uh, will be uh, uh, set into a bucket. And this bucket will have a specific number of logs per specific period of time. So we allow X number of logs per T period of time uh, per bucket. And then we decided to do something interesting, which is not common, is to silence uh, logs until the average rate of a bucket goes back down. And I'll talk about that in the next two slides. We can switch to the next slide, thank you. So the conventional folding will be, okay, let's say I allow 600 logs per 60 seconds. That will be really conventional. So if we look at the little graph there in blue, We'll have input logs generated by, our, you know, by the uh, service, for example, for our pod. And then we have in orange the output log. 
And you see that uh, the system will maintain a cap of 600 logs per minute maximum, right? And we can see that uh, minute three, we have more than 600 logs uh, in input, but the output was capped at 600. And then, and so on. And minute four and five, it continues being capped. And minute six, we have exactly the same number of logs from input and output because it's uh, less than 600. The problem with this strategy is that you will have all the logs at the beginning of your minute, and then as soon as you go over your quota, your 600 logs quota, um, you will have a gap in your logs, and then you'll have to wait until the next minute to see some more logs. And the problem when you look at logs in order is that it looks really confusing because now you have, you know, a burst of logs, then nothing, then burst of logs, nothing. So our solution is on, the, you know, as exposed on the next slide, is to um, actually silence uh, the log uh, output until the the average average rate uh, goes below a specific amount, and you know something a little bit lower than the average rate of what you have configured, and it's totally configurable in our plugin. So. Um, the idea over there is that at minute three, you can see that we have more than 600 logs in input. So it did cap properly at 600. And then after that, because the input log were still above 600 per minute, um, the system kept everything silent. And only at minute seven, when the logs finally went lower than 600, uh, did the system uh, turn back on the log output. And that uh, turned out to be really uh, useful because it's really easy to see the gap in logs in your system. And of course, the plugin will also log in its own um, uh, the uh, status of the system, you know, when it goes down and when it goes up, and periodically uh, the rate of uh, every single bucket. So we can uh, reach to the uh, thought link uh, to the conclusion now. Um, so the uh, throttling has been a success uh, and actually uh, prevented us going over quota for a few bugs. Uh, one bug in Kubernetes uh, authentication loop, uh, basically in one of the Kubernetes uh, process, uh, there was a bug at some point where we'll go into an infinite loop, uh, printing an error message uh, forever and ever, uh, and this was caught by a throttling and it capped it down, and so we did not go over quota. Similarly, we have a Fluent Beat leak uh, that is being fixed right now on Fluent Beat. Uh, it leaks file descriptors and then keep going crazy and printing an insane amount of logs, same thing. We had uh, an internal reconnection bug in the service, and as simple as a badly configured debug logging, we turned you know, debug log on by mistake on one of our service in production, and I was quite messy, but thankfully the throttling capped everything down, and we had time to react without burning our quota. So we can uh, go to the next slide, thank you. So you'll find the uh, FluentD throttling uh, on GitHub at the, you know, the third link in the page. Um, it turns out recently Fluent Beat 0.13 that just came out also has a throttling plugin, so it might be uh, worth to uh, check it out. And uh, finally, uh, feel free to uh, look at rubric.com. And we are hiring, so if you're interested, let me know. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, FX, much appreciated. Okay, uh, perfect. So what we're actually going to do now is take a brief pause and do another poll. Uh, just going to launch a poll for how people are shipping logs to Logs.io or to ELK uh, right now. Uh, so if you're not actually shipping the logs to any log aggregation, you could select other, um, but just kind of curious, you know, what the results are across the board of how people are doing that. I guess I should have put something in there for not shipping logs to you know, care logs IO yet, but uh, count that as other. Looks like we've got about 50% of the results in. People are relatively responsive, liking it. Getting up to 65%. If we can hit 80%, then I think we'll be ready to share the results and move on to the, the next section with Fluent B. Got about 68%. Anybody else coming in? 70%. All right. I think I'm going to go ahead and close the poll at about 75%. So awesome. Looks like uh, FileBeat and FluentD is really uh, split relatively evenly. Just going to show the results there, see if everybody can see them. Uh, and, you know, Logging libraries, a few of them, and a small percentage in the Logs.io Docker shipper. So excellent. Thank you, everybody, for participating. 
I'm going to go ahead and hide the results now and move on with the presentation. All right. So let's talk a little bit about FluentD. Uh, as FX mentioned, FluentD is extremely flexible and versatile. There's a wide community of plugins to handle many different use cases, and that's one of the reasons I really like it. I think Fluent Bit is also uh, equally uh, lightweight, and it's nice that uh, FX went over that in detail for us. Um, but we actually worked with a key customer to implement FluentD to log to Logs.io, and they had a couple of problems as they were utilizing ECS that we wanted to solve specifically. So the problems that they had were, you know, they had some information that lived within ECS on their container definition, task definition, service, cluster, um, that type of information that was specific to the ECS service. Uh, now, that information is contained on an ECS agent that runs on uh, all of their instances, similar to like a daemon set, the way FX described it uh, in the Kubernetes world. Uh, they're also generating, you know, a multitude of stack traces, and they want to be able to keep all of those logs uh, into one entry, you know, kind of a common uh, logging solution problem, but we wanted to solve both the stack trace issue as well as the ECS context issue. So what we did to actually go ahead and solve this was we utilized a couple of plugins that we will provide in the references. Now the first plugin is a multi-line plugin and it's, it's kind of nice because it actually stores some of the regular expressions that are necessary to capture those multi-line stack traces and makes it very easy within FluentD to actually handle those. Uh, all you have to do here is just on the top, match your particular log messages you're sending on whatever the field name is, log or message, and then let FluentD and plugin know what languages you're utilizing. From there, it really takes care of the rest. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, the other easy, the plugin that we ran to actually handle the separate issue with the ECS metadata, uh, again, very simple to just filter on you know, whatever fluent tag is capturing that information from the logs and then add the type ECS metadata filter. The kind of things that you can pull in from there are listed here and they're listed in the GitHub on the plugin and the references page as well. This is cluster, you know, container instance, Docker information, uh, etc. And then from there, we'll actually be able to pull in the stack traces and have them look clean as well. So I'm actually going to turn the presentation over to my colleague, Nani, uh, to go ahead and start with his piece. Nani, would you mind taking it off mute, saying hello? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Nani, and I'd like to um, tell you what we do here at Logzero with our own logs. Uh, obviously, we use our own uh, service for uh, logging. Um, and um, the, the story with, log, with logging at Logs.io is actually an evolution. Um, initially, uh, we started uh, with um, a service per, per host model, and um, where we had um, the logging done uh, externally to the host and then picked up with, uh, with Filebeat or their predecessors before that. And um, currently, uh, we have uh, most of our microservices running on uh, Kubernetes. And our CI CD is based around Jenkins Apollo, which is a deployment tool and it's open source written by us. Uh, you should check it out. Uh, we use Puppet for configuration management and obviously uh, Kubernetes. So we can go then to the next slide, please. Um, we are uh, mostly a Java shop. Um, and um, what you see here is uh, an example of how we. Um, use our uh, own logging libraries. So we use Logback for logging uh, for our Java applications, and we have an appender for that. We actually have appenders or logging libraries for a lot of other languages. You can see that those icons on the left. Uh, this information is also available uh, from each account in the logging tab. Uh, but in essence, uh, what you need to do is uh, simply uh, load the, uh, um, the extra library uh, that's appropriate for your logging appender and give it uh, a couple of configuration parameters, for example, the logging address uh, and a lot of the metadata that's so important when you're actually trying to use the logs that you've sent. Um, and you can see here examples 
of how we um, provide this information. Uh, we trickle it through all the way to the uh, end container, um, and then we have that available. If we can see the next slide, you see another example, uh, and this is for the uh, per host logging that we do. So most of our applications log from within the microservice directly to uh, the Logzero account that we use. Uh, but some logs uh, are not uh, emitted from those microservices. There are um, generally uh, authentication logs, kernel logs, that kind of thing. And we pick those up uh, using a daemon set on, uh, on a host uh, that's basically a file beat. Um, which we also provide with uh, environment variables uh, in order to um, populate those needed fields. In the next slide, I have an example of what an uh, applicative log looks like once we uh, have it in our account. And you can see here, uh, I marked some of the information that was passed as environment variables to that container, such as the namespace, the, the pod name, region, uh, etc. Um, in the next slide, you can see uh, what we do with uh, some of our metrics. So some of our metrics are emitted as logs by our applications uh, to a separate log. And uh, those are captured also uh, within our um, Logs.io account. And then we can use that to monitor some applicative metrics that are interesting. I'm not talking about CPU or disk usage, that, that, that sort of thing, but more like uh, rate of a service or uh, delays, things of that nature. So um, we mentioned metadata, I'm going on to the next slide now. We mentioned uh, um, metadata and uh, it's, I think it's worthwhile to, to know where this information comes from. So how do we get the, the region, uh, for example, or the environment type and so on. So uh, some of it comes from uh, different sources. Some of it comes from our configuration management. We use um, uh, Puppet with uh, Hira for that. Uh, some of it, uh, important parts, come from uh, AWS tags, which we then pull using Factor and create Puppet facts from those. And those are, uh, again, uh, sent downstream to um, whatever services or bootstrapping processes that we have. And obviously also uh, YAML files for the Kubernetes. Um, and how do we use this metadata? So the main focus of this talk is uh, obviously logging, but this metadata is not important only for logging. Uh, what we do with this is also use it for configuration management, for bootstrapping instances, for upgrading uh, third-party software components on some of the instances or uh, in other places. And we also use it extensively uh, in our monitoring automation um, in order to compose definitions for the different uh, services or hosts that are running. Uh, thanks, Eli. I think that's it for me. All right. Thank you, Donnie. Great to hear from our DevOps manager how we log at Logzeo. Much appreciated. Uh, so at this point, uh, I will actually cover FileBeat briefly as another solution, and then we'll do one more uh, poll right after that before we kind of do a comparison of all solutions. So talking about FileBeat with Docker and Kubernetes, uh, just showing kind of simply the add Docker metadata, FileBeat has in a little bit more recently kind of added the ability uh, to add that Docker metadata and enrich it with the same sources that we're looking for. So on the top, just a very simple configuration of how to do that. There is a link in the references that we provide to the file beat manual on how to do that. Uh, we also recommend running the collector, uh, file beat collector as a container itself. And then there's a reference we have for running the container as a, a sidecar uh, and utilizing this enrichment method. Uh, for Kubernetes, I actually have a daemon set to enrich that. And you can see the file beat Kubernetes YAML right there, uh, as well as the Kubernetes, add Kubernetes metadata enrichment. So again, the kind of things that we're going to cover here are container ID name, image labels, and then the basic Kubernetes metadata enrichment as well. And in the running sidecar for file beat, um, we have a, a tested example of this on, on GitHub that you can reference as well. 
So I'm going to go ahead and actually pause there. And then before we do a comparison of all solutions, I uh, just want to get some further feedback from the audience about which option looks best for your environment. Um, you know, just curious in the comments or feedback if, you know, this presentation uh, changed your thinking at all on, on your logging strategy or simply, you know, confirmed what you already knew and what you already kind of liked. So we'd love to hear from you in, in more detail after the presentation if this had any influence on you or perhaps, you know, how everybody else is doing things. Perhaps these these polls are interesting to understand. I didn't know it would be so well split between kind of the, the Fluent family and FileBeat. Um, we have about 43% of the polls coming in. I know we're, we're going towards the end of the presentation here, but I think we can make it uh, perhaps up to 60 or 70%. And just, you know, real-time results here, we're coming in with 33% FluentD, 45% FileBeat. So we seem to be relatively split. Again, just at 10% on the logging libraries as well. Fluent Bit seems to be a, a popular option to at 15%. So good deal. We've got about 60%. And I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and share with everybody. A couple more book be, uh, file beat uh, votes coming in at the last minute. And go ahead and close the poll and share the results. So it looks like file beat, uh, and we'll talk about some of the benefits there coming in pretty strongly. Uh, and Fluent D and Fluent Bit uh, represented well there in, in addition. So perfect. Uh, go ahead and, and hide the results and uh, kind of continue with the comparison. Uh, you know, complicated chart here. Um, uh, so interesting thing to, to note here, you know, there's uh, pros and cons to really each approach. And, you know, we, we talked about Fluent D being extensive on the plugins and the community uh, surrounding that. So. I think the configuration uh, can be a little bit more complex, but it's, it's very extensible uh, in nature and has really good community support. Uh, supported also on Logs.io and ELK. Fluent Bit is a great option as it's very lightweight, and we heard from FX about talking through that. Uh, I believe for the stack traces, it'd be a little bit more custom regex, but it is pretty simple. And as far as the support to Logs.io, right now you actually have to forward to FluentD as we wrote an output plugin for that. Uh, I am interested to hear from the community if there's a significant demand for a Fluent bit to Logs.io directly. If you are interested in such thing, please communicate that to us. It would increase our support. Uh, and we might potentially write an output plugin for FluentD as well, or Fluent bit, excuse me. Uh, the libraries are extremely extensible, can insert all kinds of different information as I rated them number one there. Uh, really good support for multi-line, just throw the stack traces and exceptions in there kind of natively. And then, you know, supported by Logs.io and the logging frameworks kind of vary if you're running an ELK cluster. And then finally, you know, FileBeat, uh, I rated that as number one for simplicity. Just really easy to kind of get that up and running. You do have to manage sort of some custom regexes. I couldn't find a good plugin for the multi-line. It's more writing your own from the examples. Uh, I didn't find very good ECS support for FileBeat and the native Docker works well. I didn't get a chance to test the Kubernetes uh, native support, but I'd say overall it looked pretty good. So this chart will be available for reference as well. So some, some best practices uh, and recommendations to kind of wrap things up there. As I mentioned earlier, um, we do recommend running the collector container as a sidecar. And the reason for this is that, you know, you don't have to deal with host installations of collectors and you can kind of keep with the Docker paradigm of running one service per container and have the collector be one of those. As a result, you must be sure and pass proper access from the container to the host so it can capture the logs. Um, typically, they live in directories on the host if you utilize the default Docker logging driver. We do recommend this approach. Reason for this is you can still utilize Docker logs and then you can go capture the information pretty simply on the host. Now we recommend across the board to log in JSON. It just makes the structure of analyzing your logs in Kibana, whether you're on Elk or Logs.io, so much easier um, and encourages just structured logging from the source itself makes analysis uh, a ton easier. And finally, you know, log to standard out, uh, excluding the logging libraries, uh, it makes it easier for developers to just keep doing kind of what they're typically used to doing and logging to standard out, and then pulling that information using a variety of different collection methods that we've already mentioned here. Uh, so finally, you know, what does this 
really look like kind of in practice when you get things going and, and build a dashboard in Logs.io. Uh, you know, you can get some interesting insights on your different container services and images and log level, um, you know, chart these things over time and be able to see if particular issues stand out by Kubernetes pod or by, you know, exception or other types of information. So just wanted to show kind of an example dashboard of, you know, once we have that proper metadata and we have our logs structured pretty well, how easy you can, you know, build some of these dashboards and get to the bottom of an issue that you're troubleshooting. So finally, here is our reference architectures. Uh, you know, as I slow show this slide, uh, I'm going to run one more poll, and then after that, um, we'll go ahead and let uh, Boaz chime in with some conclusions for the presentation. Um, this poll is just, you know, hey, which which piece of the presentation was actually, you know, more relevant for you? Just kind of the overview and conclusion, or you know, perhaps some some pieces that I covered, or kind of the fluent bit and throttling piece that we heard from our customer FX. Or finally, you know, Nani's logging libraries uh, component of the presentation describing, you know, how we do things in depth here at DevOps at, uh, at Logs.io. So we'll wait. Hopefully we can get some final engagement on this last poll and pull ourselves to 60%. We're at about 55 right now, so moving pretty quickly. I'll give it another 15 seconds to see how high we can get there. And then I'll go ahead and share the results. Uh, looking relatively evenly distributed at this point. Sounds like depending on your particular flavor, you might have had value in a different piece of the presentation. So perfect. Then I go ahead and close the poll and share the results. Looks like relatively evenly split. Uh, you know, fluent, fluent D, file beat overview conclusion, fluent bit and throttling, and as well as the logging libraries. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn this over to Boaz to uh, pull for questions and kind of offer a conclusion there. Boaz, you want to take a, a microphone off mute there and uh, go ahead and start talking? All right. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Eli FX and Noni so far. And thank you, everyone, for um, for answering the uh, polls. That's, that's fascinating uh, to see that and to analyzing that. So uh, we did get some uh, questions from you guys. I'm going to read it out, and uh, Eli, if you want to take it or, or uh, distribute it, uh, otherwise, please feel free. So if we are using Kubernetes and just looking to get up and running quickly with Oxio, what would you recommend? See if I can take it off mute there. Perfect. So, um, you know, before I probably would have answered this question as running FluentD, However, if your needs are relatively basic, um, I think I was actually highly influenced by FX's deployment of Fluent, B, Fluent Bit and Fluent D. I think it's a great implementation. It's simple and Fluent Bit utilizes less resources. So that's actually kind of my preferred choice for the up and running very quickly. If you have more extensive needs like ECS or a lot of multi-line messages or something like that, um, then you know I may go with, with Fluent Fluent D, but I like the Fluent Bit solution. File Beats equally is is easy, but I, I just like the flexibility and you know things that kind of Fluent Bit offers. All right, thanks, Nate. Yeah, I think a related question: Do you have a supported container we can use uh, with a sample DS that we can use to ship logs to you um, for Fluent D? They're using the the guy who has, uh, submitted the question says uh, I'm using a GitHub of demon set FluentD logs referenced in one of your uh, uh, blog posts. Yeah, absolutely. So we provide some samples in uh, in GitHub um, with kind of the the best one I would say with, if with FluentD would be the FluentD Kubernetes daemon set, which I'm showing. Um, it'd be the at the top of the FluentD ones with Kube there. Um, the, the main contributor for Fluent D, he actually recently just added the Docker container for Logs.io. If you looked maybe even a month or like three weeks ago, it wasn't there. Um, so this is a very recent addition to be knowledgeable about, and that would be a really good sample set there. Um, we've got like a reference architecture that I'm going to put up on GitHub where we have it running as a sidecar too. I just didn't quite get time to put that together, but we'll also put that together to be an additional contribution to the, the information. All right. 
Thank you, Eli. Um, next question. Um, our developers are already logging to standard out and we can't get any time from them to change anything. What solution should we use? Yeah, so I would say typically in that situation, uh, easiest to utilize the Docker JSON logging driver, as I mentioned, for, for best practices, and then probably get up and running with either FileBeat or FluentBit. A uh, similar answer to the, the first question, but um, the logging libraries are awesome for the flexibility and everything that Nani showed, but if you can't get in developer time to make any changes, then one of the other shipping and centralizing solutions would probably work better for you. Okay, thanks. The next one is a little a little wide question, I think, but let, let's take it a shot. Let's give it a shot. Uh, what do you think about using FluentD, Syslog, or another Docker logging driver? I don't like those. Um, the reason is I, I did a lot of research and I found a couple of open issues with Docker where containers either wouldn't start or they'd actually, the entire Docker service would crash. I was hoping to utilize like a better, find a better solution for this, but I mean, there were comments from years ago and then follow up from now and nobody ever seemed to step in and address the problem of affirmatively from Docker. So I was a little disappointed. And a few customers that I work with had ex actually experienced their Docker service crash when they were using the FluentD logging driver. So although they're pretty clean with the metadata, I just couldn't take the risk uh, that it seemed like existed there. And that's why I preferred to go with the Docker JSON logging driver and solve uh, all the other problems creatively with plugins. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, last question for now, unless if anyone else uh, has another question, so please uh, send it quickly in. Seems like you are easing the pain of being blind when upstream applications go over quota. But by doing so, aren't you removing the motivation for people to log less with higher quality? I think that question was actually for FX, if I interpret correctly. So perhaps I will see if I can take FX off mute or if FX can unmute himself and we can address that question. See, so, uh, um, I think it's a, I think the question is a combination. It's, it's uh, I actually thought it was targeted to you guys at Logs.io, as in because you make it so easy to send so much log, uh, it might be tempted to, to send uh, less quality logs. Um, my answer will be no, I don't think so. Um, so in our case, we it was actually really helpful to give us time, to buy us time, to uh, fix our problems, to get our logs better quality. Uh, for example, we had one person working almost two weeks on a project to um, enable a dynamic uh, uh, debug log. So what it means is that you, we can turn on a log, a debug mode uh, per um, customers, uh, you know, one customer at a time in our running systems uh, independently of the general configuration of logs, right? So you, we can say uh, turn on debug for this customer, but nobody else. So we can really have full information only for one customer. And that's really useful. And obviously it's way less data than turning debug on for everybody at once. And that took uh, two weeks to implement. And for those two weeks, it was great to have this, uh, you know, dynamic and elastic uh, logs IO system where we could send a bunch of logs. And even though it was not the most useful to have that much uh, debug log at once, um, at least uh, uh, Logio could handle the load. And then we were able to turn on the new system and gradually, you know, uh, increase the quality of a log. So, no, I think it's actually, uh, uh, for us, it's been really good at least uh, to uh, be able to, to buy time until we can improve the quality of our logs without losing any. Awesome. Thank you, FX. Appreciate it. All right, I think um, that's it with the questions so far, and we are at the top of our uh, time here. So that's it for today. Special thanks to Eli, Noni, and FX, and thank you to our audience for attending. Thank you very much. I hope you all learned something new during today's webinar. And if you have any feedback or comments, please email us at help at logs.io. Um, we'll be sending out a recording of this webinar soon, so you can uh, re-watch that and share with your friends. Before we go, I, I wanted to let you know we are holding another webinar in a month. So please, if there are any specific topics and features you'd like us to focus on for our webinar series, 
please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to us and let us know. Finally, please make sure to book your free training session or complete your onboarding journey with your uh, customer success engineer today. Don't hold up, just let us know. We'll be happy to jump on a training session with you guys. Until we meet again, please take care of yourselves and your logs and let us know if we can help you be more successful. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.